What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. And we are coming off an ugly, ugly defensive showing last week against the Portland Destroyers and subscriber wide receiver Alexander Kleblek. In fairness, though, all three games so far of the season have been ugly, ugly performances here for your Tuscaloosa Terminators. Now, we may or may not have some help on the way today. More to come on that soon. But in today's episode, we are taking on the 1-2 and two Rochester Rebels in the NFC East. We are at home at Skynet Superfield, and we are also going up against subscriber quarterback Chase Kaiser. Now, if this is your first time here in the SFL series, know this. I did custom relocate all 32 teams. You could go back and check out the first episode in the playlist if you want to see them. I made them all myself from scratch. Took me several weeks to get them all made. And also, subscriber players can join the league. Check the pinned comment down below on how to join and get your creative player here in the SFL. Also got the SFL official Discord. I've been kind of slacking on that. Need to update that. Um, but it's more or less up to date. Just got to add a few things. I could use a moderator in there, so if you guys want to join the channel memberships and support me, one of the perks, along with several others, is moderator access in the SFL Discord, but we got five new subscribers joining the league today, guys. We got to check out this Rochester Rebels roster and see what we're going up against. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. Now, our team does look a little bit different here, actually a lot a bit different here at quarterback. If you've been watching this series, you know that Bo Nix was our starting quarterback, and he was averaging three interceptions a game. So he did so bad, not only did he get, he didn't get benched on this team, he didn't even get cut from this team. Oh no, he got literally transformed into our new subscriber man under center, and that would be one Drew Thompson. Shout out at Cool Blazin down there in the comments. Try to spell your name with the A, you know, P-S-A-N. And EA said it was, uh, what, what do they say? It's profane. Huh? Which I've ran into that problem with a couple other people in the league. Uh, Nagram Briner, Gram Briner in the SFL wouldn't let me make it Nagram. But yeah, I don't know what's so profane about Thompson with an A, but I had to improvise. And so Thompson is what it's going to have to be, unfortunately. But he is our new man under center, six foot, 209 pounds out of Purdue got the Drew Brees type of build going on here per your request and he is an accurate son of a gun 90 medium accuracy 91 short accuracy and 93 play action uh, also a little bit faster than Bo Nix as well so not a speed demon by any stretch of the imagination but better definitely than Bo Nix more accurate and hopefully not gonna average three interceptions per game that kind of falls on me, but uh, excited to have Drew Thompson as our new man under center. And then our defensive squad here, just packed full of subscribers. We got Jax Vaden here at linebacker. We got Jaden Taylor here at corner. Our defensive line here in the 4-3 is also subscriber pack too. We got Aiden Leslie, Silas Vaden, Austin Kringle, and a new subscriber player joining our defense, another Taylor. So we got two Taylors on both sides of the ball here. And this would be Mr. Amari Taylor, six foot eight, 210 pounds. Shout out at Andrea Salinas down there in the comments out of Texas A&M. Our secondary needs help and Jaden Taylor is a good one, but he can't do it all by himself. So hopefully Amari Taylor joining his side here can be the answer that we need. 96 speed, so extremely fast, good in man, good in zone pretty good in press can jump the ball so between the two tailors i need to see some interceptions here today and last but certainly not least a new subscriber kicker on this roster we cut justin tucker so somebody is about to pick up a good one but we got mr Corey booter here love the name shout out at Corey 2173 down there in the comments for some reason and yeah like this is just ea being ea man all this weird stuff like oh people are names are profane etc etc I, they would not let me put Corey Booter as the kickoff start. He's not even in the depth chart. So, like, they'll put uh, quarterback Drew Thompson in there, Pat Fryermuth even. But I could not get our starting star development kicker to even be allowed 
to start the kickoffs. I don't know why, but he's got 99 kick power, also 89 accuracy, so pretty accurate. But man, if we get into a spot where we got to try like a 70 yard field goal, now I suck at kicks and he's not the most accurate, but he's definitely got the leg to get it done. So welcome to the team, all of our new subscribers. Now let's go check out some other ones that join some other teams around the league. This is very, very interesting. Twin brother of Drew Thompson, our new quarterback on our team. We got Alex Thompson playing on the North Carolina Flyers who are also in our division so so far we have not played any teams in our division they all got subscribers on them we do take on the savannah spirits next week which i am really looking forward to but alex thompson here 6'5, 239 out of wyoming gave him the josh allen build 97 throw power 92 deep accuracy maybe not as accurate as his brother in the medium and short range but definitely more of a cannon that's for sure so kind of just like some different skill sets there can also run a little bit better those are pretty fire jerseys too if i may say like i said go check out the first episode all the teams i made are in there but alex thompson at some point in the season we are going to see a twin brother versus twin brother subscriber matchup here in the sfl and i cannot wait and speaking of the savannah spirits new subscriber joining their squad so they now have subscriber quarterback caleb hayes they got two subscriber wide receivers to the smith brothers not really brothers but you know deandre smith and george smith and then adding halfback here daniel banks so shout out at golden rogers down there in the comments got gave him the isaiah pacheco build per his request so 59216 out of rutgers and daniel here is a very very solid running back nothing that he's really weak at he's can change direction really well and also very fast too with the 94 speed may not be the most elusive guy in the world but he's gonna be a tough son of a gun to bring down with the 93 break tackle combined with the 95 change of direction and again like i said we are gonna be playing these spirits at some point next episode as a matter of fact so that one should be action friggin packed and here is our opponent today the rochester rebels in the nfc east and we are going up against subscriber quarterback chase kaiser shout out at jimmy Delion down there in the comments 511 180 out of ohio state gave him the justin fields type of build maybe not with the throw power but uh, i think i bumped that up a little bit because chase was uh in the 70s and i try to make all our subscriber players start in the 80s with star dev however if you want to join my channel memberships there's two levels coach and gm and one of the perks coach role gets you superstar dev and a gm role gets you superstar x factor dev so keep that in mind and you would be supporting me i'm almost at a thousand subscribers so trying to finally make some money off this youtube grind but that aside chase kaiser got the 95 throw power not the most accurate deep and medium but pretty accurate short and being a justin fields type of inspired player also gave him number two as well the 97 speed definitely makes a lot of sense so he will be our uh, subscriber opponent today they got raheem mostert as the halfback oh and by the way if you don't know i did a fantasy draft too at the start of this season so all the players are shifted around to god knows where um that kind of scares me cd lamb and brandon cooks okay so just the dallas cowboys uh <laughs> Wide receivers here, DJ Chark, Ricky Purcell, CD Lamb's going to be a problem. I already know it, man. Um, our secondary's got their work cut out for him. But Dalton Kincaid, Nikhil Harry, not the best tight ends in the world. Andrew Thomas, really good left tackle. He'll be protecting Mr. Kaiser's blind side. Joel Petonio, the Cleveland Browns left guard. He is the left guard here in Rochester. Mason Cole, not the best center, but he's here. Kevin Zeitler, really good right guard. Been doing it for a very long time. And uh, Jawan Taylor, the penalty king, uh, jumping off sides or, or jumping, uh, you know, false start in there early in Kansas City is the right tackle. Another Cowboy. So, OK, just poached all the Cowboys players here. Demarcus Lawrence at the left end. Grady Jarrett at the right end. So they must be running a, a 4-3 scheme as well. Devon Hamilton, Dwayne Carter are the defensive tackles. BJ Ojolari is the left outside linebacker. Jerome Baker and Elandon Roberts are the middles. And then Christian Harris is the right outside linebacker. So pretty good defense so far. Trent McDuffie, very good corner. Surprised, really, that he doesn't have superstar. You know, not X-Factor so much, but at least give my man superstar. I think he deserves it. Devin Witherspoon, JC Jackson, D. Alford, um, Minka Fitzpatrick. Yeah, okay. Their defense officially scares me. Jair Brown at the strong safety. They got Matt Gay kicking the ball, and they got Tommy Townsend putting the ball away. So there are your Rochester Rebels. 
and really need a win today so hoping we can pull it out against this squad here terminators versus rebels here got to look at these rochester rebels uniforms that is their away got the rr on the side and pretty slick if you ask me their home jerseys are the blue and the yellow which is kind of like albany's uh colors and then of course i made the winter blues as their. i actually like those a lot uh do i just go i think i'm going with the winter blues man that's a slick slick combo there with the black the uh yellow trim there going down the side and of course we will just go ahead and rock our standard home jerseys got my terminators pink on as well to help fire up the boys so if you guys are fired up speaking of for the sfl series please like the video subscribe to the channel and without further ado guys let's get on down to skynet superfield and get ready for the game and we are set for action here at skynet superfield gonna get the ball first here so gonna be seeing our new subscriber quarterback drew thompson right from the start and speaking of subscribers, there is a subscriber corner slash kick returner, Jaden Taylor, making a nice move, but also getting upended, doing a good job getting it to the 34. And here comes the new sheriff in town here, Drew Thompson out of Purdue. Now I did. Yeah, OK, I was going to say Bo Nix's stats still showing up because all I did was change edit Bo Nix into Thompson. Hindsight, maybe I should have, uh, you know, like added a free agent or someone like that. Because I do kind of want him to start out at zero stats. So maybe I'll go back and change that next episode. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, we're going to give the newcomer here a shot. Something safe, easy completion here. Mesh concept. We'll just go to David Njoku. Kind of dangerous pass, actually. But nice job picking up six. And the Chief here has been a key contributor to this Terminator squad. As you see last week, seven receptions for a buck 26. And maybe Drew Thompson's new favorite target i don't know him d hop we got romeo dobbs we got tyler boyd we got some talent at the receiver position and matter of fact i mean this could be a yeah, boyd on the rpo he's got blockers look at tyler go all right that's gonna help drew thompson settle in pretty nice i would say as first two passes are completed for a total of 27 yards another guy who's been playing great for us is christian mccaffrey obviously you know he's our best player and he really put that put that uh, on full display last week, picking up over 100 yards and trying to uh, shake the defender there, Minka Fitzpatrick. He's not going to be able to. So we'll settle for three, kind of getting into it with Fitz, too. I like it. I like the intensity. I like the aggression. We need a win, guys. We're one and two on the season. Defense not playing great. Our team is good on paper. So on paper, we should be outperforming squads. So um, today, you know, is the day. Let's just go to Romeo Dobbs, who has room to roam. Dobbs has played so great for us. And he's going to get this all the way down to the nine-yard line. So how about Thompson starting out perfect? I think I said what I just saw it on the screen there. 57 yards, I want to say. I believe is what it said. And Romeo Dobbs with some good yak yards after catch there. I got to say, man, I'm in love with these uh, Rochester Rebels uniforms here, especially their alternates. And I'm just pretty much in love with the SFL as a whole. I'm really happy with how these teams turned out. I encourage you guys to go check them all out, especially if you want to join the league. There could be, you know, a team that you really, really like that you want to be a part of, which I think would be awesome. And McCaffrey just refusing to go down doing a good job even to pick up two so we are on the seven here would love to get drew thompson his first touchdown pass on the season we got some drags and uh we also got najoku as well that's a dangerous pass kind of glad i was sacked there or almost sacked if i'm being perfectly honest by demarcus lawrence because that one actually could have ended in disaster but here's a chance for the newcomer to really display his arm strength here we're gonna send tyler boyd on a streak and just hoping that either Dobbs or Hopkins, one of these two, can get open. It's Dobbs, and he's in. Laser pass there by Drew Thompson off of the slant. And that was not an easy ball to hang on to because Dobbs was popped there at the end. But that was a good drive. And in fairness, though, I know I probably sound like a broken record to you guys. And for that, I'm sorry. No, I'm actually not. We haven't had a problem with offense. Like, I am confident that we're going to score 30-plus points every game. Here's a look at our new subscriber kicker as well, Corey Booter. Hopefully he can uh, boot this one through, which he should with no problem. So nice job by Tuscaloosa going up 7-0 early 
here on the scoreboard. But this is where our struggles do lie. As I'm sure you guys know, if you've been watching this game plan, defense has been a problem. Now we got Amari Taylor joining the fray today. We got a good subscriber pack defensive line. We got Jaden Taylor out there. We got Jax Vaden as linebacker. And uh, here is subscriber Chase Kaiser, 648, 5-5. Five and five, So not really a great touchdown interception ratio. And as much as I want you to excel, Chase, because I, I love the fact that you're a subscriber on this channel, I'm really hoping this is the game where we get to the quarterback and cause some havoc. Silas Vade in our defensive. By his grace, by his grace. Tackle. Oh, what did I say? It's Jax Vaden. Subscriber, linebacker, brother of our defensive tackle, Silas Vaden, shooting a gap. And man, when's the last time I called a sack play in this in this series? Have I even? I don't know, but look at Jax just shooting through a gap. Would not be denied on that one. And I'm still early on, but if that's a sign of things to come, holy Toledo, I'm going to be happy in this one. And oh, nice defense there. That's actually Xavier Howard. So not one of the Taylor brothers. Um, not brothers, but, you know, on this team, we're all brothers. We're the band of brothers. So uh, the X-Men veteran here in uh, the SFL doing a good job to get back there. And this is a big third down. We got to get him off the field, guys. Where's Kaiser going to go? We know he can run with that Justin Fields type of build. And he is met there by Roquan Smith. And good job. I don't think that we've had a three and out on an opening drive so far yet. So again, I know it's early. But if this is a sign of things to come, I am extremely happy, and if it's not, you know, at least our defense played good on one drive. I'm glass half full smalls today. Now let's see Drew Thompson and the offense go back and hopefully go up two scores. Come out here, Pistol. Let's give it to McCaffrey. I do, however, want to double team Demarcus Lawrence. Kind of want to audible D-hop, but not going to do it. McCaffrey. Oh, I uh, tried to cut it back to the left, but I was a little bit too slow. We had a hole there for a moment. And unfortunately, I just kind of misread that one. So I will take that one. Second and 10. Don't need to get all of this back here. Trying to keep Thompson clean on the ledger here for picks. So we'll just go screen pass to McCaffrey. See if he can uh, get out in open space, which he kind of does. But not the best block in the world set there by Ryan Kelly. Would have liked him to hold that for just a you know couple moments longer to give McCaffrey a chance. But, uh, you know. It is what it is, and now we are in third down. So can we convert this? Probably looking at Dobbs as my first read. Maybe Najoku. Oh, yeah, it's Dobbs all day, baby. Nice, another laser there by Thompson. So Thompson remains perfect. I like the way that he's throwing the ball. I highlighted that, you know, pregame. He is pretty accurate. So definitely showing me something, and I like the way it's starting out. Here on second and 10, I may just like D-hop on a curl. If I'm being totally honest, nope, but we do have somebody open. It's Tyler Boyd. And man, Drew Thompson, how about the newcomer here? Over 100 yards in the first quarter. That was a good uh, good job by me going through the progressions because D-Hop was my first read. And if I'm being honest, Tyler Boyd was probably my third read. We're moving again here. Balls on the 24. An outside run to McCaffrey seems like a good idea, but... There just wasn't really too much there. Uh, we all we were running to the short side of the field too, which I don't actually love to do on a ooh, TE attack. Okay, yeah, I'm glad the coach called this. Let's see if we can roll out and hit Najoku. That's usually what I do in this situation, but it all depends on what the mic does there. If he drops back, which he will, so Thompson gonna roll out. And you know what? Let's just take off with Drew Thompson. Injuries are off in this league now. I wouldn't normally do that, but since this is a subscriber league, I don't want, you know, your player to get injured and be out for the whole entire season and you never get to see him. Like, that would be, that'd be highly, highly unfortunate. So, turn the injuries off. Felt like it was the right thing to do. So, we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, Thompson getting injured, anything like that. I don't actually love this. We're going to look at D-Hop. We'll see what that safety does. It's not there. So just go to Najoku underneath. Not going to do anything crazy. And just like that, we are down to the seven. All right, CMC, show me something, brother. Let's uh, have DeAndre Hopkins go to the outside there just to 
kind of get the defense guessing a bit and uh, someone hold a block please it's Trent Williams too man like best left tackle in the business arguably and he wasn't able to hold his block and set the edge for McCaffrey and oh, one of our offensive linemen's getting fired up I don't know who they're getting fired up at but they're definitely fired up uh, it's third and five here clock ticking down we will snap this ball and maybe Najoku, no Dobbs? Ah, couldn't hang on to it. Could not hang on to it. That's going to bring us to the end of one. But we will bring out our new subscriber kicker, Corey Booter. And hopefully he will be able to put us up 10-0 on the scoreboard. 25-yard chippy here. So should be no problem at all for Booter. And that one should be right down the middle. So 10-0. I'm cool with that. Would have loved to go up 14-0. But uh, the Rebels only been on the drive for one field, too. So we have, or, f wait, what? You're crazy. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. Only been on the drive for one field. Is that what I literally said? I uh, sure hope not. Sounds like it. What I meant to say was the Rebels only been on the field for one drive. So we have dominated time of possession. Hopefully, uh, Jax Vaden can get another sack or one of our other subscribers can make a big play. And we'll see how drive number two for Rochester goes. All right, D, come on. Another drive like uh, the last one, and we'll be gold. And they got a full house back there in the backfield, too. Don't want to jump off sides with Roquan Smith. That would be bad. It's going to be a give to the running back. He's off to the races. It's actually Alexander Madison, who is our running back in the Akron Summits franchise, the other series on this channel. If you guys haven't checked that one out, go check it out. That's my main franchise, so... You know, go through all the scouting processes and the storylines and all that stuff. Look, you know, trades and whatnot. Oh, Kaiser, it's a forced fumble. Who poked that ball out? Was that Vaden? Was that Vaden? Go, Vaden, go. Okay. If that was Silas Vaden, come on. It's got to be, right? I want the Vaden brothers to have good both sacks and a forced fumble. We got we to gotta take a look at that. I believe... It was subscriber Silas Vaden, captain of the defense. He wears that C on his chest. Let's take a look. It was Silas. I know you are watching this right now, brother. Throw me something in the comments. Get hyped. You see, he is a he should have a C on his chest. I made him a defensive captain. But how's about both the Vaden brothers getting sacks on Chase Kaiser? And Silas's sack is actually going to result in a forced fumble so this is the defensive showing that we have been waiting for still early i know still got a whole another half of football left to go but you couldn't ask for a better start i mean come on christian he could ask for a better start as he's not having the same type of game he had last week all right come on guys rochester negative 10 yards i just saw that wow uh, would love to go up 17 nothing here. Going to be looking for probably D-Hop on the shallow crosser. It's open enough. I mean, can D-Hop fall forward? He can't. It's third and two. And I mean, I would take a field goal if that's what it came down to. But I really don't want one. Um, I'm going to go just straight up the gut here with McCaffrey. I see a little bit of a little hole there on the left side possibly with Trent Williams so come on Christian fall forward please he's gonna get just enough he's not running great today uh, a little slow to get up to but again there is no injuries Tyler Boyd on the RPO um, I'm gonna do the full slide to the right just in case that's not there but it is I need D hop to set me a good block Tyler Boyd getting very close three catches for 58 yards and he gets this thing all the way down to the three-yard line. Come on, Terminators. I believe in you. We're going to go draw play straight up the middle with McCaffrey. And the ID up uh, the proper mic there. And that, yeah, I don't know. Can I just ever have a game where everything goes right? I know I'm being a little greedy, but, like, in this game, the passing game is working. The defense is working. And, oh, the one thing that hasn't been working so far in this uh, in this league, or the one thing I should say that has been working, is the running attack. And right now, that's not working. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my wins and be happy with it. But, yeah, I would love for just for everything to go good for once. Najoku, open. Please get in there. Thank you. Drew Thompson's second touchdown of the game. And this is the best we've looked all season, guys. Short short season so far, only four weeks in. But the first three games was rough defensively. 
And this game, you know, aside from the running attack, that's the only thing, like I said, it's not really hitting. But aside from that, we look like a complete football squad. Even Corey Booter booting balls through. And I am McDonald's freaking loving it so far. Rebels with negative yards. Chase Kaiser under duress. Is this the Tuscaloosa Terminators? <laughs> it's not the Terminators team that I'm used to. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I love it. So Jaden Taylor, we're going to use her up on him. He's in the cloud flat, so I'm just going to kind of watch this side of the field. Ooh, got to watch Mostert. Their rushing attack has been pretty good. Small sample size, only two really good carries, but they've been really, really good ones. Uh, Raheem Mostert and Madison both getting some nice carries. So Nick Sirianni may be looking to lean on the running game in this one as the passing attack and specifically the offensive line not really holding up. And I don't know what that was. He was looking for Ricky Purcell, the rookie out of Florida. Third and two upcoming. Do we have another third down stop in us? I'm going to have Roquan Smith try to shoot a gap here. See if we can do it. More pressure from Kaiser and Raheem Oster. Oh, completely missed the tackle. I'll tell you what. We I don't know who that was. Maybe it was one of our subscribers. We were about this close to getting to Kaiser again. And I mean, I just would have. I would have lost it. As I'm sure you guys would have too. Alas, twas not to be. And this is the best drive that the Rebels have put together so far. Can we get back to Kaiser again? We cannot. And he is going to find his receiver there, Brandon Cooks, who just refuses to go down. Brandon Cooks, not that big of a guy, but he's playing like he's six foot eight, 250 pounds. As he was just shaking off tackles left and right. Maybe Ben, but don't break, right? Hold him to a field goal, possibly. I'm going to have um, Alex Singleton just kind of sit there and spy the middle of the field because we know how teams like to carve us up in the middle and it is going to be a touchdown so no blowout today but i mean look first touchdown from the opposing squad coming late in the second quarter i will most certainly take that second and one want to kill as much of this clock as possible before we hopefully score so mccaffrey gonna get it off the screen and that is fine and dandy with me i am in no rush to snap this ball because in a perfect world we score with no time left Rebels get the ball back after halftime, so do not want to give them a chance to, you know, double dip or anything like that. So good clock management is definitely going to be in order here. And this could be Boyd again, possibly. Maybe Najoku on. It's Najoku for sure. David going to catch it. Stay in bounds. And, I mean, he's trying his best to get out of bounds. I don't know why. But Drew Thompson at 163 yards, two touchdowns. And here's the key stat zero picks minutes ago here another screen to McCaffrey again I'm fine with it we got all three timeouts I just don't want to do anything crazy and again old father time is also our opponent as well nice move from Christian and if nothing else we are in field goal range here guys so not even going to call a timeout because guess what guess what EA doing something dumb oh yeah there's no clock runoff if you know huddle it there is clock runoff if you don't know huddle it there's no there's no clock run out. Like, how does that make sense to me? I don't know. 30 seconds left. Got to kind of entertain the idea of using timeouts now. And we're going to do just that as Dobbs hauls in a tough catch to make a second and inches. We're in good shape here, boys. Second and inches. 23 seconds to go. Got two timeouts. It's got some uh, some curls on the field there. It's McCaffrey. He's going to catch it and get very close down to the five. We'll go ahead and burn our second to last timeout here and probably should do end zone shot um, because we only got one timeout left. And if we don't get it or we get sacked or something like that, then we want to make sure we have time left to obviously kick the field goal. And I don't know if this was the right idea going to, uh, to McCaffrey here, but I'll tell you what, we're going to rock with it. And Thompson, yeah, okay, that's fine. Just step up. It's okay. I'm going to just go ahead and call. Our last time out with three seconds left, bring back Booter, and I'm okay going up 20 to seven. In comes number one, Corey Booter. Should be able to boot this chippy in here, and we'll go into the, ooh, I kind of moved that uh, stick there a little bit at the end. But we'll go into the locker room, up by 13, two score ball game, Rebels get the ball first. All things considered, great half of football. Just gotta do everything that we did the same or better and hopefully we can get back to 500 on the season. Here comes Chase Kaiser, up and down half. He did put it together there at the very end, but man, he was under heavy duress there to start, and that's what we're gonna do 
to start this one too. I do need Xavier Howard to play some man coverage. And nobody really is on Kincaid, which I do not like. But, oh God, Jaden, Jaden. Okay, okay. Good recovery there by Jaden Taylor. And ultimately, uh, he was brought down there by TJ Edwards. But pressure is what worked in the first half. Both the Vaden brothers had a sack. Thylus, our defensive tackle and captain of this defense, had a forced fumble. But it looks like uh, Chase Kaiser is starting to settle in here. And they're still very much in this ballgame. So the last thing we want to do is allow them to come back, which I'm going to have single to. Oh, God, nobody's there on Cooks. Where's everybody at? Jax Vaden trying to hawk him down. And tell you what, man, Brandon Cooks for his size. He is breaking every single tackle that comes his way in this game. So playing for the field goal here, obviously. And auto alignment. Yeah, I tried to fool him a little bit there with some uh, trick coverage the last play, which I guess it kind of worked. Roquan Smith has his X Factor on too. So we can see the routes on the field, which I actually don't always like. There's CeeDee Lamb. First time I think we've called his name. Kaiser's got his Rebels down to the six-yard line. Come on, defense. We're audible in this into some pressure here. Roquan Smith needs you to shoot a gap or somebody, please. It's good defense there at the last minute. I saw number 11, Amari Taylor, in there. He was going to uh, Pearsall again, the rookie out of Florida. And, I mean, pretty much in this spot, like, just has to be pressure. And this is going to be a running play, too. That's the beauty of having Roquan Smith on this team, as we can see. The route's a keeper from Kaiser. Kaiser, he's drilled back there by Silas Vaden again. Now, that one may just count as a TFL, but regardless, it was a great play. And that's why I love having Roquan Smith. I gave him that ability that I think it's called Psychic, where you can see the routes on the field. So guess what? If you don't see any routes, you know it's a running play. And that one certainly was a running play there. And we were able to uh, converge there on Kaiser and looks like most routes are going to be going to the right here so let's have uh, Aiden Leslie just kind of he's going to drop back and kind of patrol this part of the field here see where Kaiser's going to go he's going to go to Raheem Mostert and Mostert is going to be stopped one yard short of the goal line so we'll see if Sirianni goes for this he should kick the field goal wow he is going to go for it oh my gosh how about that uh, is this going to be a pass or a run? This is a run. So we are going to... Oh, I got I to gotta guess run, man. I got to run commit. I didn't do it. I'm an idiot. Should have ran commit up the middle. Didn't even think about that. Oh, I believe we could have stopped Mostert there. I believe we could have stopped Mostert there. Yeah, duh. If I see that it's a, a, a run play, run commit, man. Yeah, nice response there by the Rebels. Nick Sirianni with some... Steal cojones there as he elects to pass on the field goal. And now our offense has to go back to work and play great like they did in the first half. Here's some highlights from our new QB, Drew Thompson. He's been slinging some bullets out there. No interceptions so far. Knock on wood. He's threading the needle. He's splitting coverages. He's doing really everything that we could ask him to do in his first game here in Tuscaloosa. So definitely want to keep that momentum going. I did make the focus running it outside coming out of the locker room. So I think that we will try to do just that with McCaffrey. Let's flip the play, though, to this side of the field, the long side of the field, and also going to have that line slide over a little bit. Now I need Hopkins and Dobbs to hold some blocks. That's key, which they do. And man, oh, man, how did Jerome Baker get out there so fast? Got to go TE attack here. Can I roll out to the left? That is the question I'm not going to be able to, but I'm going to try to fit it in there to Najoku, and that is going to be, oh, that's a tough one, man. That is a tough one indeed. It's Jair Brown, the safety. I mean, I did even, uh, pass led that thing to the left, too. I, wasn't a terrible read. I mean, Brown just cuts the route, but Najoku, he had, he had inside leverage, too. So he should have been able to kind of seal the defender off there, you would think, and make a good play on the ball. But Jair Brown's just like was psychic on that one. He must have Roquan Smith's ability, right? And after all that great quarter, great half of play, we're actually down on the scoreboard now. Got to figure it out. All right, outside run to McCaffrey here. That was, that was tough. That was a tough one, not going to lie. First interception thrown by Drew Thompson, but a blip on what has been really a stellar game. 
I mean, you're going to throw interceptions. Like, interceptions do happen. It's it's going to happen to literally everybody in the league. So just got to shrug it off. And, you know, as long as we're not chucking a three game like, like Bo Nix was, we should be good. Um, Najoku or Hopkins, somebody here is good. I mean, can Najoku even run his route? Like, what is going on? Man, oh, man. He, Atlanta Roberts was just biting him the whole entire way. Could never really get open. Can you feel that momentum swing? I sure can. Got to pick up this third down here. This is key, crucial, and imperative, and we're just almost going to get sacked. Wow. Okay. Um, that's not good. Atlanta Roberts making two really good plays on that one, and we are going to have to punt it back to the Rebels. So, I mean, that's a completely, completely different half of play that we saw in the first half. Hopefully our boys can bounce back. That's a good punt, though, from A.J. Cole. Can it check up? No, it cannot. So drive is going to start at the 20. We can still see the routes, which I do like sometimes, but I'm just going to play just as if I couldn't see the routes. I'm just going to, ah, C.D. Lamb with the catch there. Mari Taylor, our new subscriber corner, going to make the stop. Rochester is starting to play some ball here, guys. They are starting to play some ball. I don't like it. Not a fan of it. Can we still see the routes? No. Now, now we can't see the routes. So, it's uh, it's back to a brand new ball game here. Need need to see that defense that we saw early on. Can we see him? That's the question. Where's Kaiser gonna go? We know he can step up. Come on, another fumble. He's gonna wisely slide as I believe that was Jack's made in there again. Second and two now upcoming. All right, come on, Terminators. I got faith in you. Can we get back to Kaiser? He's completing everything now. He's in a zone. Playing like a man possessed, not the same QB that we saw early on. He has rallied the troops, and they are playing some really good football here. Nick Sirianni must have had a pretty good halftime speech in the locker room because uh, these boys are fired up. Not going to lie to you, but it's okay. Just need a couple more big plays here. Roquan Smith. Ooh, don't jump off sides, please, Roquan. Please, I almost did. We're going to cancel Blitz, and Kaiser is going to find C.D. Lamb, who is starting to get more and more involved in this game. This guy seemingly just can't Don't miss. Please. First and 10, ball is on the 38. Need some good plays here, boys. Roquan Smith. Ah, that wheel route, man. That, oh, God. It's happening. It's happening. It's all crashing down before my eyes. Now, it's only an eight-point game, so we can score here and, you know, two-point conversion. We'll tie it up. But those wheel routes, I was usured up on Roquan Smith. You would think that would be a good thing, but it seems like whenever I do that, it is a disaster. What's that, 21 straight points now by the Rebels? Uh, yeah, that's seven points going into the locker room, I believe. So just a complete and utter fail by us, me. I'll say me. I'll definitely say me. That interception was killer. Can't be doing that. And uh, it's got to bounce back, battle through adversity. Maybe Tyler Boyd, that is going to be the move. And another nice block there by D-Hop. So Boyd's good day continues. Thompson still with some good stats. 2-12, two, two touchdowns, and of course, that dumb pick by me. I don't like these play calls either, man. I'm not a big fan. This is the uh, Tampa Bay playbook. I don't really like it, if I'm being totally honest. But, you know, we're here. We're in it. We're going to rock with it. Hopefully, it's maybe Dobbs um oh I hit the wrong button I am such an idiot oh my god that was almost hauled in by Boyd I was trying to go to Najoku in the middle of the field I hit the wrong button and I just suck all right man tides are starting to turn here play action out of the shotgun need some time for this play to develop and that's such an idiot man why do I do the things that I do I just don't know I knew there was no shot that that was going to be completed, but I already had it in my mind of where I was going. And I mean, I just, I can't even believe that we're having this conversation right now. And it is me. This one is me. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's not, um, it's not playing great. It's not playing great today. It's playing good to start. And for whatever reason, just can't figure it out now. Roquan Smith though. Nice tackle. Got to get this ball back and keep it a one-score game, man. All right, we're locking in here. We're locking in here. Got to change the trajectory of this game. TJ Edwards, can you get back? Can we get some more sacks on Kaiser? Now it's just free reign. Brandon Cook, the broken tackle master, going to get it again. Now it's just free reign. He's doing whatever the heck he wants to. He's carving us up. And not a fan of it. Not a fan of it at all, but it's okay. 
Just got to keep persevering, keep pushing, live to fight another play. Roquan Smith, where's he going to go? Come on, nice defense there by Howard. Would have liked the pick, but I'll take the bat down. We're still locked in here. Going to use her up on Roquan Smith again, and ugh, I don't like the fact that he just sent Raheem Moster in motion. Nice open field tackle there by Amari Taylor. If they don't convert this and they have to settle for a field goal, that is going to be the play of the game right there. And, I mean, honestly, like, got to send pressure, right? You got to send pressure. Hopefully, you would think it's a running play. We're about to find out here. TJ Edwards probably will be a running play. Of course, it's not. What the fuck is this? I don't know. How did I say that? And the Rebels have completely taken control of this game. Tale of two halves here. It is the tale of two halves. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, just not. Fig go figure, right? Here's what's crazy. And this is not the game or anything. This is just this is just my life. Uh, <laughs> the one game that I start to fit, I can never play defense. Our offense is always fine. The one game that our defense looks like it's going to be good, I come out of the locker room and just start playing the worst football of the series. And it sucks, <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, there's a whole lot of season left to go. I don't want you to show me the picks from Thompson. I already know. That's what you're going to show me. I don't want to see him. And we got to we gotta strap in. And game's not over, right? Uh, still a two-score game. But we got to strap in, make some good reads here, play some good football. Who's going to be open? We're going to go curl route there to Dobbs. He hangs on. Nice play by the Terminators. DE attack here again, man, and just let me roll out. That is what's going to happen. And we're taking off with Thompson. We're taking off with Thompson. Thompson's got plenty of real estate to work with. Nice rush there, about 30 yards on the play. And we got to score, have our, and our, hopefully our defense can do what they did earlier in the ball game, and we can tie this thing up and play for overtime. That's really, you know, best case, only case scenario for us, really. Uh, but it all starts with this play. DeAndre Hopkins, nice catch. That ball kind of floated in there, but luckily Hopkins ran a good route. And the pass was completed. Still time here, but we gotta, gotta start moving. Hopkins open underneath. We know he's still got some speed here in his old age. And Thompson at 252, two and two. So lots of twos in there. We got a two on the scoreboard. A two and a O, as a matter of fact, 20. And do we just go screen pass? Might not be the worst call here. Um, clock really not a factor as of yet, but it will be soon. So we gotta... Think about moving. Still got to, you know, make a stop on defense as well. That's the thing. McCaffrey going to be open on the screen. He might get in there. Going to be stopped at the three. Need some goal line wide stick action to Hopkins here. Please, please convert this Hopkins diving catch. We are right back in this thing. And you know what? For the two-point conversion, I may call the... Ex We're going to need a two-point conversion anyways. Might as well get it now. And I'm probably just going to call the same exact play. It's a little cheesy, possibly. But, hey, I don't care, man. By any means necessary, we got to find a way to get this victory. Hopkins is the exact same. Exact same animation. Exact same result. And we're back to within seven. So as long as our defense can, can come back alive here, need a resurgence, we'll get the ball back again with a chance to tie and play for OT. I don't really want to play for OT, but if I got to play for OT, if that's what it takes to get the victory, then so be it. But it all starts on this drive right here. Chester going full house again. We'll see if it's a run. It is actually not. I need a pick, man. We haven't got picks either this season. We finally started getting some sacks in this episode and CD Lamb getting into it with Aiden Leslie over there. Aiden, you got to show him, show him what's up, man. Second and five. Now will it be a running play? It most certainly will not. CD Lamb is eating. I mean, if we can't force a fumble, like, CD Lamb's going to get the ball every time, presumably. And I don't even necessarily know why they're so, like, pass heavy. I guess they they just feel confident in their guys that they can go down and, yeah, let's uh let's actually man cover CD Lamb. He's a problem. Now watch it. Nope, it's not going to be a run. Got to watch Raheem Mostert out of the backfield. Kaiser, he's looking to take off. That time he is stopped there by Roquan Smith. But the problem is they're already in field goal range. So, like, 
there's really, I don't see any world that we win this game. Which, man, oh, man, that is crazy because we were up 20-7 to playing great football. And I just, I just became me. That's, that's all I can tell you is I just became me and started throwing interceptions. I mean, it happens, you know. CD Lamb, God, that's not even CD Lamb. It's Kincaid, but he actually drops it. Third and seven, got to hold him to a field goal now. All right, boys, this is everything. This is presumably the ball game. It's a screen pass to Moster, and it's executed beautifully. And I don't know what to say. We're going to go down 1-3. Um, just crazy, man, because my other series, Akron Summits, were winning in that game. And teams aren't, you know, scoring tons of points. I honestly think part of it, and, and look, this is not, I'm not making excuses. I'm really not. But I this playbook, I, I hate it. I'm going to probably switch to the Raiders playbook because that is the team that I'm using in the main franchise. I'm a little more comfortable with that playbook. Another 40 bomb, and they had seven. I, I can't even say it out loud. It's going to make me sick to my stomach. Say it out loud. But it is what it is. And just got to figure it out for next week. Going to at least try to score again. I mean, could get like an onside kick or something. That's not completely out of the realm of possibilities. Thompson just throw it away. That could happen. I mean, I, I feel like that was the case last. Didn't we kick an onside kick or try to kick an onside kick last episode too? I, I want to say we did. Um, I kind of like Hopkins up the seam though. They're single high safety. And that is going to be the move. And Hopkins actually hangs on, too. So, if nothing else, we're going to try to uh, help out Drew Thompson here, the quarterback, and get downfield, make the scoreboard a little bit more respectable. Uh, I'm just, I'm frustrated about this game, man. And I got nobody to blame but myself. I know that. I get that. And now Romeo Dobbs can't even hang on. And although we should not have put them in this position, the defense did... Let us down in the second half, too. Like, I don't get it. They were playing so great. So great in the first half. First quarter, really. Like I said, we should have never put them in that position to where, you know, they they would have to, to play that great. But that's just a complete flip of a switch. I don't get it at all. And it, it, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Wide open there on the outside, though, is Dobbs. That time he does hang on. If nothing else, we're going to try to put up 35 on the scoreboard. McCaffrey, Texas route, maybe. It's a pick. It's a pick. No, it's not. It's actually hauled in by McCaffrey, and he gets in there. Now, game is not over. I, I cannot figure out how to get an onside kick, which is crazy. They're hard to get. That was a dart there by Thompson. So at least if nothing else, Thompson's stats are going to look much better. And the final score is probably going to be similar to what it is every single game so far and that just goes to show you right there we're going to end up probably losing by a score by one score um and that's that's the the boneheaded boneheaded picks by me um that's what it comes down to at the end of the day i never know like do you go high kick do you go normal kick i don't freaking know man that oh come on oh 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 did we get it we got it okay hold on ball game's not over ball game's not over ball game is not over i'm calling my own plays here too i do not even care say what you want normally i go coach suggestions but um i'm not on this one because we got a chance to send this now it might not even matter right it may not even matter but we got a chance to send this puppy into ot and you best believe i'm taking that chance Thompson with some wheels and if we if we come down here and score and take this thing to overtime I mean that would just be like wouldn't that just be absolutely crazy still got to do it though that's the problem so who oh I saw him too late I hate my life 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 and I hate my life I saw oh god dude I'm not even, mm, it's me, that's 100% me. That was the same uh, play that we hit Dobbs on earlier. And I, I, he was open. I saw it. I saw it too late. God, I suck. All right. Good game, Chase Kaiser and the Rebels. And he, yeah, he ended up balling out at the end of the day.
Yeah, that one is tough. That one is tough. Here's my synopsis of the game. So first and foremost, I suck. But I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I, if you guys have watched me play Madden for a while, I, I win me some ball games. The synopsis of the game is number one, I suck through way too many picks. But the story is not just that. It is still the defense. Because aside from that first quarter, the Vaden brothers were in there making good plays. But we let Chase Kaiser finish with over 300 yards. And it looked like at the beginning of the contest that he didn't even know how to throw a pass. So the, the tale of the tape is you can throw picks and your defense should be able to still make stops, you know, from time to time. So that is still the tale of the tape. And I, I don't know what is up with it. But yeah, I mean, another week, another near perfect quarterback rating from Kaiser. Thompson played good. The same stats as Bo Nix, though. Uh, 338, four touchdowns, three picks. McCaffrey also could not get it going whatsoever. That is unfortunate because we really could have used him today. Raheem Moster and McCaffrey, leading receivers, running backs out of the backfield. There you go. Boyd had a good game. Dobbs, I mean, you know, receivers doing pretty much what the receivers do. Now, there was some good takeaways on our defense. I will say that. Um, so we'll take a look here at our subscribers. So Amari Taylor, he was in there with five tackles. He was all over the place, which is good to see. Jaden Taylor had three. Jax Vaden, three tackles, a TFL and a sack. And then Silas Vaden, two TFLs. They didn't count that one as a sack, which is weird, but he had that big force fumble, which is uh, which is awesome. Aiden Leslie had one tackle and no stats for Austin Kringle, unfortunately. So a tough one, but let's go check out the rest of the stats for our subscribers around the league here in week four. Albany Argonauts and our subscriber slash channel member on this team, Bobby Donuts. We'll get a look and see what he did. 24 attempts for 98 yards. So not a bad performance at all. Didn't have any touchdowns, but that's okay because his boys still did get the win. Of course, Bobby moved up to Superstar Deb by becoming a channel member a couple weeks ago. So if you would like to join Bobby and become Superstar or X Factor Dev, join those channel memberships and support ya boy. Subscriber packed performance and the Savannah Spirits do get the victory over the Oklahoma City Eels, and we're going to have to face these spirits next week, and they may just turn us into spirits as Caleb Hayes, a very uh, Drew Thompson-like performance, really. 371 through the air, four touchdowns, three picks, so at least it's good to know that it's not just me throwing the interceptions. Mason Buchanan had three touchdowns, only one pick, but uh, the yardage really wasn't there. And a new subscriber here, Daniel Banks, he went 14 for 65 for a touchdown. Brown Briner, not the best performance, 12 for 29, only averaging uh, 2.4 yards on the ground. And Spirits also got two uh, subscriber wide receivers here. So George Smith went seven for 68. And DeAndre Smith, who just went off last week, killed it. Kind of cooled down at two for 17. Ronto Thunderbirds get a nice win over the Dakota Pronghorns. And we got to get a look at, uh, wow, a subscriber quarterback, Jordan Baker, 367, one touchdown and no interceptions. 109.3 quarterback rating is awesome. And I mean, he had two 100-yard receivers in that game, Cortland Sutton and Keon Coleman Sutton being the recipient of that big touchdown. Boulder Rockies keep finding ways to win and the Louisville Fighters are 0-4. So we're not the worst team in the league. <laughs> there you go. Lucas Thomas, 261, four touchdowns and no interceptions. That is a very... Very good game, and uh, Lucas Thomas, we had, we should have, uh, what is going on here, man? Najee Harris coming in and poaching the yards from Austin Lucas. Don't do no depth chart tomfoolery like last season's uh, iteration of the SFL. I had to go into depth charts all the time. If I got to kick out Najee Harris, I will kick out Najee Harris. Because we can't be having my man get all the stats, but... Regardless, a nice win for the Rockies. Portland Destroyers, who just beat us last week, do take the L in this one. And uh, we'll have to check in on subscriber wide receiver Alexander Kleblek. He went three for 38, no touchdowns. And after that big, big W against us, the Portland Destroyers do cool off, taking the L in week four. North Carolina Flyers also dropped to the Coyotes. So both of the Thompson brothers 
do suffer the L. Deshaun Watson is, and I believe the Coyotes are are uh, are lossless. They're undefeated so far. But Alex Thompson, 171, no touchdown. I mean, no, or, uh, one touchdown, no picks, I should say, rather. But 171 yards, not going to win a lot of ball games doing that. And unfortunately for them, the Flyers do take the L in this one. Topeka Silverbacks continue to stick to their winning ways. And we got subscriber quarterback Kyrie Brooks. He absolutely went off in this game. 324 through the air, three touchdowns, and only one interception. Puka Nakua was his big target. Also, Josh Downs, Noah Fent. He got a lot of guys involved. But how about, uh, why? What is... Why is the B? Okay. Trying to figure out why that B is lowercase. I must have just typed that in that way by accident. But nice job, Silverbacks Nation. Kyrie Brooks continuing find, continuing to find ways to win. Ooh, crushing defeat from the San Jose Industrials. 20-3. to three. And we got to take a look at Drake May, who, wow, he was playing so great. He did not play good in this one. And Yeezy Fuentes, says he... Did not even have a catch, unfortunately. Now, I don't think that's a depth chart thing because really, like, I mean, how many yards did Drake may have? Not many. Yeah, 106. There's not a lot of footballs to go around when your quarterback is 106 with a 25%, 25.2% quarterback rating. So that was tough to see. And I'm sure the industrials are going to be looking to bounce back next week. Jersey Shore D's do get a convincing uh, victory over the Portland lobsters and we got to check in on our defender here aiden grau who he had four tackles no picks nothing like that but the d's do get a very convincing win against the portland lobsters and last but not least uh, another subscriber packed contest here salem steelhawks do get the victory over the grand rapids lightning cameron moore playing very good three touchdowns one pick 290 yards through the air so you love to see that. And Floyd Butler here, we can look at his stats on the Lightning. He went one for 13. So, you know, nothing really to say about that one. And we should have two defenders here. Daniel THG with four tackles and also not Oreo one tackle, but also a big sack on the QB as well. All right, guys. So depressing loss for me. Now, if we get a look at the standings here, one and three. I mean, the only good thing is the NFC does not look that good. We got the Spirits in the Revolution and the Steelhawks, too, in fairness. But those are kind of the big three. So if we can just start winning some games here, we're not too far behind. You know, uh, to put it in perspective, like the Snow Owls are two and two and Juno Snow Owls there. And they're the sixth seed. Uh, same with the Rebels, who just beat us two and two. And they're the seventh seed. So they would be wildcard teams. So we're not... We're a couple wins away from getting back into playoff contention. So don't give up on me now. Make sure, you know, I'm telling you, there's there will probably be a turnaround. Maybe not. I could be wrong. But, uh, you know, don't know if it's going to come next week as we're taking on the undefeated Savannah Spirits, 4-0. And we already saw their quarterback, Caleb Hayes, putting up some points. So make sure you bring the lube and the Vaseline for that one now. That is going to do it for me tonight, guys. But as always, I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.